Let's discuss about second order differential equation of the form AD squared Y all over DX squared plus D uh, plus B D Y all over DX plus CY is equal to zero. So basically the overall goal here is to find the general solution and particular solution if only the terms are given to this type of second order differential equation. So let's have a short description about this uh, uh, format. So your A, B, and C, these are your constants, okay? Then of course, we have B squared Y all over DX squared, and then we have BY all over DX and C, okay? And as you can see, um, since we're talking about second order differential equations, okay, one important part here is this term, okay? Your B squared Y all over DX squared. This is the most important part, okay? So why is it that this is the most important part? Because without this one, the differential equation will never be second order, okay? So if we have this case of, uh, what do you call it? So this case of equation, let's just say this does not exist, but only these terms exist only. So this is no longer a second order rather this is in first order differential equation okay but if we have d squared y all over dx squared then the differential equation is no longer in first order rather it is in second order okay so let's go to the next topic which is how would you find the uh, uh, the solution for this case so first, you need to substitute your D all over DX as your D, capital D. So you will have AD squared Y plus BDY plus CY is equal to zero, which is this one, okay? Then as you can see, um, the terms here has Y, so you can factor out Y here. So you will have quantity AD squared plus BD plus C times Y is equal to zero. So this is what you call the D operator form okay then after that you're going to substitute your d as your m okay then equate this trinomial to the zero so we will have am squared plus bm plus c uh, plus c is equal to zero so this is what you call as your auxiliary equation okay so <clears throat> now that this is your auxiliary equation, you're going to find your M, okay? So since this looks like a trinomial and it is a quadratic equation, so you're going to use methods of factoring and quadratic formula, all right? Or either of those methods, you can uh, basically use it. Okay, so quadratic formula or other, metho other methods of factoring, it's up to you. And of course, since it is a quadratic equation, expect that your uh, result should have two values or to be particular, two M values. So since there would be two M values, then expect that there will be three conditions. So what are the conditions? First, condition is that if we have two different how we call it there we go so if we have two different m values okay meaning you have found your m values both of them are real but they are different to each other so you are going to use this as your general solution where in here uh, you see these letters small letter a and small letter b these are your real m values so for example let's just say i have a uh, i have an auxiliary equation which is m squared minus 5m plus 6. so if i'm going to factor this out i will have uh, m minus 3 times m minus 2. so i will have m is equal to 3 and m is equal to 2. So if you're asking me, how did I get M minus 3 and M minus 2? 
I simply equate these two binomials by zero. So I transpose negative three here on the right side, I will have m is equal to three. If I transpose negative two here on the right side, I will have m is equal to two. Hence, I have two m values. So since I have two different m values, but both of them are real, therefore, I am going to use this general uh, solution. So I will have y is equal to ae raised to 3x plus be raised to 2x. Okay. So you can make this as your a and this one as your b or vice versa. It's up to you because it doesn't matter which one would be your small a or which one would be your small b. It doesn't matter. All it matters is at least you found your m value and you use the correct general solution. But what if, let's just say we have two the same m values, which is your second condition. So if you have two the same m values, then you're going to use y is equal to quantity ax plus b times e raised to small ax. So let me give an example. Let's just say I have, oops, let's just say I have m squared plus 6m plus 9 is equal to 0. So this is your auxiliary equation. Okay. So if I'm going to factor this out, I will have m plus 3 times m plus 3. So see, both of them are the same. So if you're going to combine them both, I will have m plus 3 squared. Wait. So I will have m plus 3 squared is equal to 0. Okay? So that means I have 2m plus 3 and both of them are the same. So by finding your m, you can square root this one both sides. You will have m plus 3 is equal to 0 and transpose 3 to the right, you will have m is equal to negative 3. So therefore, your general solution would be y is equal to uh, quantity ax plus b times e raised to negative 3x. Okay? That's it. All right? That's how you basically do it. So that's good for the second condition, but what if we have complex m values? Basically, we have a result of an imaginary uh, answer. So if your result is an imaginary uh, answer, you are going to use this formula as formula. You're going to use this general solution. Y is equal to quantity A times cosine of small bx plus B times sine of small bx times E raised to small ax. You will know if your A uh, your A is your M value. Ah, oh, wait, sorry, sorry. Let me fix that. You will know that your value is your A if it's in this form. And you will know that your value is your B if it's partnered with your imaginary number. So if you have M is equal to A plus or minus B I or your imaginary number, then you have your A as your um, exponent here in your E and your B as your the inputs of the given trigonometric function. So that's how you do it. Okay. So let's try to have some examples. Okay. So before anything else, if ever, for example, you're too lazy to figure out if this auxiliary equation will give you two different m values, the same m values, or complex m values, you can just base it on here, b squared and 4ac. If your b squared is greater than your 4ac, then that means you are going to use this general solution. Okay? It shows that you have two different m values. But if they are the same, then you're going to use this general solution. And lastly, if b squared is less than your 4ac, you are going to use this general solution. 
So let's go uh, apply it to our given examples. We have d squared y all over dx squared plus 4dy plus 4y is equal to 0. Now, the first step here is to substitute your uh, d all over dx as your d. You will have d squared y plus 4dy plus 4y. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to factor out y here in this expression. You will have d squared plus 4d plus 4 times y is equal to 0. Okay. Now, after that, you're going now to substitute your d as your m and equate this expression into the 0. I mean into the equate this expression to 0. So you will have m squared plus 4m plus 4 is equal to 0. So this is your auxiliary equation. Now, um, let's factor out. But before that, since you want to know if this equation will give you two the same m values, different values, or etc., we're going to base it with b squared and 4ac. So remember that this is your a, this is your b, and this is your c. So your b here is your 4. So we will have 4 squared. Whoa, whoa, all of them. So we will have 4 squared. And here your 4ac, we will have 4 times. Your a is 1. Your c is 4. So let's uh, get the answer here. Your b squared. 4 squared would be 16. And here, 4 times 1 times 4 will give you 16. And as you can see, both of them are equal to each other. So it means we're going to have two the same m values. Hence, we are going to use this general solution, which is your y is equal to quantity ax plus b times e raised to small a x. Okay. Now, let's find your m value for your small a. So since, um, let me erase this one. Uh, yeah. So since we have uh, the same results as your b squared and your 4ac, it means that the given here is in perfect square trinomial. Okay, so therefore, this one, if you're going to factor this one, or if you're going to use quadratic formula, rather, you will have the result of negative 2. But if you're going to factor it out, since you're not using quadratic formula, the result would be quantity m plus 2 times quantity m plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay. So if you're going to obviously multiply them together, we will have the square of m plus 2. Wait. Nope. Nope. There we go. So in here, if you're going to find your m, you're going to square it both sides. So we will have m plus 2 is equal to 0. And transpose your 2 here, we will have m as your negative 2. And since we have your m as your negative 2, we will have y is equal to quantity ax plus b times e raised to negative 2x. And that is your general solution. That's it. Forgive my handwriting, but at least it's readable. So let's have one more example. Okay. <clears throat> let's just say we have this one. Okay. 5D squared T all over DN squared minus 50DT all over DN 
plus 250t is equal to 0. So as you can see, there is a difference of the letters that we used earlier. So earlier, we used y and x. Now we use d, ah, sorry. <clears throat> now we use letter t and letter m. So that means your t here, since it is above or in the numerator, this is your dependent variable. Okay. And your n here, since it is on the denominator, this is your independent, or I'm just going to put, uh, there you go, in, independent variable. Okay. So be very careful because um, you might forget what letter you're going to use, especially um, since there are three general solutions and maybe you might confuse which one is your X and which one is your Y. Okay. So, um, yeah, your T is your dependent variable and your N is your independent variable. So let's go. Okay. First, before anything else, I can, I can actually simplify this one. Okay, I can actually simplify this equation because we have 5, negative 50, and 250. Okay, I can simplify that. First, I can factor out this expression by 5. So we will have 5 times 1 pt d squared t all over dn squared minus 10 dt all over dn plus 50 t. So, if I'm going to divide both sides by 5, I will have d squared t all over dn squared minus 10 times dt all over dn plus 50t is equal to 0. Now, since this, uh, this is already simplified, we can now basically um what's this find the general solution so first substitute your d all over d and as your capital d okay so this would be d squared t minus 10 dt my uh, minus plus 50 t is equal to zero <clears throat> Now, we're going to factor out your t here. We will have d squared minus 10d plus 50 times t is equal to 0. Okay? And since we have already the factored form of this expression, we cannot substitute your d as your m. So we will have m squared minus 10m plus 50. And you're going to equate this one to zero, just like the same procedure as the previous uh, example that we just answered. So we're going to equate it to zero. Okay. So once again, since we already factored this out, we're going to substitute D as your M and equate this expression to your zero. So we will have this one. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> before anything else, you can use B squared and for a C format or, or method so that you can determine if this equation will give you a uh, two different values, the same values or complex values. So this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. <clears throat> so your B here is negative 10. So we have negative 10 squared. So you here we have 4, and your A here is 1, and your C here is 50. So the square of negative 100 is basically 100. And 4 times 1 times 50, um, it will give you 200. And now let's take a look. Your B squared is less than your 200. Okay? Therefore, you're going to use the third condition, which is you will have two complex m values. So you're going to use this, um, what do you call this one? You're going to use this uh, general solution. So we will have uh, <clears throat> t 
is equal to quantity A times cosine of Bn plus B times uh, whoa, 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 whoa. sine of Bn, a small Bn, times E raised to A. Okay, so if you're wondering, why is it that the, the letters are changed, right? Originally, it is y is equal to 8 times cosine of bx plus b times sine of bx, or small bx, I mean, times e raised to ax, right? Yes, uh, I changed the letters because of the given problem here. So your t here is your dependent variable, right? Your n here is your independent variable. Therefore, if t is your dependent variable, you're going to change your y as your t. Okay? And since you have your n as your independent variable, you're going to change that from x to your n. Okay? That's it. <coughs> So, just like what I told you before, uh, before, just like what I told you earlier, be very careful of the given letters you have. Okay? So, let's now proceed. Now, let's find your values here for your M. And since we all know that it will result to complex values, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to use quadratic formula. Okay? So let's use quadratic formula. So we will have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So here your negative b will give you positive 10 or just to <clears throat> take it slow, your b is negative 10 plus or minus square root of the square of negative 10 minus 4 times 1 times 50. Okay. So, we will have also a denominator 2 times 1 because your A is 1. Wait, let me fix that. So, here we will have 10. plus or minus square root of 100 minus, uh, yeah, 200. Okay, did I write? Sorry, I'm just going to check. Okay, I'm correct. <laughs> Let's go back. So this is your two. two times one is two. So we have 10 plus or minus. So 100 minus 200, uh, 100 minus 200 will give you negative 100 all over. So if you're going to uh, simplify this one, the square root of negative 100, this will give you um, hold on, 10 plus or minus 10i, okay? Because remember that the square root of 100 is 10, but since we have negative 100, so it will become 10 times i or 10i, okay? All over 2. And now you can simplify this one. 10 plus or minus 10i all over 2 will give you 5 plus or minus. Wait, not, wait, wait. 5 plus. Uh, wait, wait. 5 plus or minus 5i. So this is your m value. Okay. So. Recall, let's go back again. Okay. Your A is basically just a constant. Okay. And your B is partnered with your I. So, your A would be the input or basically the exponent for your E. And your B will be the input here for your trigonometric functions. So, going back... <clears throat> This is your A, and this is your B. So we will have T is equal to quantity A times 
cosine of uh, bn or 5n. Okay? Plus b times sine of uh, your small b, 5, then n, then times e raised to a, which is 5, times n. So that is your general solution. Okay? Now let's have one more practice. Let's just say we want to find a particular solution for this one. Okay? So let's just say that your n is equal to 0. Okay? Then your t is equal to 4. And your dt all over dn is equal to 2. Find the particular solution for this one. So it's simple. Just, sim just simply substitute. <clears throat> so going here. Okay. So your t is equal to 4. So we will have 4 is equal to quantity a times cosine of since your n is equal to 0 so we will have 5 times 0 plus you have b times sine of 5 times 0 then times e raised to 5 times 0 so we will have 4 is equal to um hold on e times or is equal to a times cosine of 0 plus b times sine of 0 times e raised to 0. So if you're going to take a look, um, cosine 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, we will have, um, what it was 1? We will have quantity a times 1. Next, since your uh, b sine 0, oh, sorry, since sine 0 is equal to 0, then we will have b times 0. And since your e raised to 0 is equal to 1, therefore we will have 1. Because remember, anything raised to 0 or anything that has an exponent of 0 will be equal to 1. So let's simplify further. We will have a Wait, sorry. So we will have um, a plus 0 times 1. So you will have 4 is equal to a. So your a is equal to 4. Okay. Now, how would you find your b? Are we going to substitute your, uh, your what do you call this one? Your a in here. Then let's redo it again. The answer is no. Okay. That's already wrong if you're going to do that. Also, remember that we have dt all over dn, right? So if we have dt all over dn is equal to 2, therefore you're going to get the derivative for this one, okay? Your general solution, okay? So we will have dt all over dn is equal to, you, you're going to use, uh, what do you call this one? Product rule here. So you have, a times cosine of 5n plus b times sine of 5n. Then here we will have times 5e raised to 5n plus we will have uh, e raised to 5n times negative 5a cosine of 5n plus wait, wait, plus 5b times uh wait 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 sorry sorry I'm actually wrong 5a times sine 5n plus uh 5 times uh, 5b times cosine of 5n okay. So if you're asking me how did I get this, I use product rule of differentiation. 
So if you don't know how to do product rule of differentiation, I suggest you should um, uh, go back to that lesson first so that you will have the idea. So let's now substitute. So your dt all over dn is your 2. Okay. Then let's substitute. So your a here is 4. So we will have 4 times cosine of, since your n is equal to 0, so we will have 5 times 0 plus b times sine of uh, 5 times 0 times 5 times e raised to 5 times 0 plus e, wait, hold on, plus e raised to 5 times 0. Okay, and then here we will have negative 5 times 4 times sine of 5 times 0 plus 5b times cosine of 5 times 0. Okay. So here, we will have 4 times. Since uh, here, if you're going to multiply 5 times 0, it will become 0, right? So we will have cosine 0. So cosine 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, we will have 4 times 1. Okay. So this would be 4 times 1. Okay. Plus, here we have your b. Your b here, okay, we have sine times 5 times 0. So once again, if you're going to multiply 5 and 0, we're going to have 0. And since sine 0 will equate to 0, then we will have b times 0. So here we will have 5 times e raised to 5 times 0. So again, multiply 5 times 0 will become 0. So it will become e raised to 0. But since anything raised to 0 is equal to 1, therefore we will have 5 times 1. Okay, plus here, oh wait, I'm just going to bring it down. Okay, plus, so here, once again, we have 5 times 0. So this, this would be, of course, will become 0. So we will have e raised to 0. And once again, anything raised to 0 is equal to 1. So we will have 1. Okay. Then next, here we have negative 5 times 4. So we will have 20, a negative 20 times. Again, we have 5 times 0 here. So obviously, this would be 0. And since we have sine of 0, it will become what? 0, right? So this would be 0. Plus, here we have 5 times b times cosine of uh, 5 times 0. And once again, we have 5 times 0 here. So multiply 5 by 0, we will have 0 again. And since we have cosine of 0, what would be the result? The result is 1. So we will have 5 times b, hold on, 5 times b times, wait, times 1. I think that would be far better. I'm going to rewrite it. So now let's um, simplify. So 4 times 1 is 4. Wait, sorry. 4 times 1 is 4. Um, B times 0 will become 0. Then times 5. Okay. Plus 1 uh, or basically 1 times um, 20 times 0 will become 0. 5B times 1 will become 5B. Okay. That's it. So now let's uh, simplify further. 4 plus 0, we will have 4 times 5 plus 1 times 0 plus 5b will become 5b. So we will have 2 is equal to 4 times 5 is 20 plus 5b. To transpose um, 20 to the left, we will have 2 minus 20. Wait a minute, this is... Wait a minute. Hmm. Ah, okay, okay. I'm correct. Never mind. So 20 is equal to 5b. So here we will have negative 18 is equal to 5b. So, so divide both sides by 5. We will have negative 18 all over 5 is equal to b. So that is your b already. Wait, wait. Just let me fix that. 
Okay. All right, let's go back. So since your B is equal to negative 18 all over 5, and we have your A here, we can now further substitute it in the general solution. So we will have, um, where should I write? I'm just going to write it here. All right. So we will have, you know what? I'm just going to write it here. So we will have P is equal to quantity. Okay, since, okay, you know what? Let me just copy this. I'm having a hard time. Forgive me. Okay, so I'm just going to put it here. Okay, so that's it. So since your A is equal to 4, then we will have 4 times cosine of 5n plus, since your B is equal to negative 18 all over 5, so we will have negative 18 all over 5 times, wait, um, let me fix that, 18 all over 5. There we go. Times sine of 5n times e raised to 5n. There you go. This is your particular solution. Okay, so this is your particular wait, solution. Okay. And let me copy the general solution here. So that's it, guys. Um, that's how you basically find the general solution, particular solution, or both solutions, if and only if they are in this format, okay? Wherein you have the group of terms here that are equal to zero, okay? Because it would be a different scenario if your um if your right side of the equation is not zero. Okay, that would be a different scenario already. But if you have zero on the right side, then you're going to follow these formats okay, or these steps. Okay. And since this is equal to zero, this is a homogeneous T. Okay, because you will know if it's a homogeneous if on the right side of the equation or at least, no, not at least, but um, one of the side of the equation is equal to zero. And since we have zero on the right, this is basically a homogeneous D second order differential equation. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all I can give. So yeah.